Hi guys, this is Joy with Obsessed with Scrapbooking and I wanted to give you a quick overview of the Design Space 3 program. All right, let's get started. When you first um, come to this site, design.cricut.com, you will come to a landing page. I'm already pre-wired um, up to be logged in. Normally they will prompt you to do that. This is our landing page and so across the top it has a slider bar that's showing you different things about Design Space and you can also learn some more about it or you can also see your projects. What's great now about Design Space 3 is that you can actually see your projects. <laughs> Instead of in the past, they were just names and you had to wonder what that was. So now here's pictures of all the projects. You can scroll down and see featured projects, which are the Make It Now projects you can make with Design Space and also what's new in Cricut Access and Featured Artist, Anna Griffin, etc. So you see there's quite a lot of choices as you keep scrolling. Oh my gosh, there's, like a, there's really a lot of choices. Okay, all right, moving on. I want to start a new project. So I'm gonna go up here to the right at this green button that says New Project. I'm just gonna click on that. Now this looks different from Design Space 2. So if you're new to this, I just wanna go over a couple things on this left-hand side. New would be for a new project. If I click on Projects, there comes up all these projects that are the Make It Now projects. So let's not do that, let's go back to new. And then images, if I click on that, all these images will come up from Cricut. And you can go ahead and use the search box and search among them, so I'm gonna search for cats. And all the cat images will come up. This little A in the corner always means access. That means that's the subscription program. If you have the access program, you can use those things and also says subscribe. So just a little bit about that. And I wanna point out over here, there's a filter button. And when I hit that, I can just search for my images, uploaded, free, Cricut access purchased, types, layers, all kinds of things here. So you may wanna just see your own images, or let's just look at free. Let's see what happens when you do that. So what it'll do is, I have these cats. I wanna see the free cat images, here they are. So there's actually, I didn't even know there were any free cat images. So see, this is interesting. <laughs> this little button here to the far right just lets you um, see more images on a space. So in this case, you would see bigger images. In this case, you would see smaller images. It's just a toggle. Okay. Moving along, here's our text bar, and we would just add our text, and you just type it in. Now let's say you want to go ahead and change what text this is. You go over here, up to the left, and you click on font, and you scroll down, and here are all, all, because that's what's green, all the fonts, and examples. You could also do your system fonts for your computer. So here's a bunch of these. And you could just do all Cricut. You could search, like I just wanna see the close to my heart ones. I just have to type in close and here they all come up. So I could change it to that one. Just press a button, there you go. I'll have another video with more detail about fonts because there's things about font sizes and letter space and line space and aligning the font and blah, blah, blah. So we can go over that in a future video which I will go ahead and link to. Um, but in any case, this is just the basics. Now, off here again to the left, there's a shapes um, button. So here are all our handy shapes, including the score line. That's a very important button that when you start creating your own projects, you may wanna put score lines in, so that's good. And then final button is upload. So you could go ahead and upload things. So I have Joy from the um, that movie that I can't think of the name of. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys know what it is, right? <laughs> you do. So I've got some uploaded images here. And you can upload them. You can also do pattern fill, all kinds of things. And I will also have a video about that when the time comes. I'm going to, now I just hit new. So it says a project is already on the canvas. Are you sure you want to replace it? You want to save it? I'm just going to replace it since we're just fooling around. Okay, now let me choose an image. I'm just gonna choose any image. So we've got something on the mat. How about this B? So I just click on him. I go down here to insert images. You can click on greater than one image and they all will come up and you can see this, them in this little bar. And to make them go away, you can just re-click on them and they go away. All right, so we'll insert this B. Now, I want you to notice all along the top, there's all kinds of stuff here. 
that used to be hidden away. <laughs> now it's right front and center, which is great. So most important button that you're gonna use the most if in fact you wanna do things precisely is the sizing. Cricut usually, um, when you read handbooks, they uh, lay everything out according to height, it will tell you. Occasionally it will tell you if it's width, it'll say a W. But typically you put in a number for height if that's a concern for yours. This little lock button, if you unlock that, then when you change it, it squishes all around. Or if I were to change the height to five, it would just elongate the height and keep the, um, the width. It would not keep proportions. So just something to know. Now let's say I did that and I'm like, oh no, I messed up, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back to the undo button here on the far left and I can hit it a number of times. Oops, too many times, now he went away. So I'm gonna hit redo so he comes back. You will not see these items highlighted until you actually click on the image you wanna fool with. So there's also a flip button. You can flip horizontal or vertical. So now he's upside down because I did, what did I do, vertical. And you can flip it horizontally, but since he's um, symmetrical, there won't be any difference, you can see. You can also click this button, Edit, where you can cut and copy different pieces, and then you'll be able to paste after that. Let's add a shape, too, so we can start just looking at this shape. Now I've got this shape. I'm going to just drag the handles instead of precisely sizing it. Let's me, let me do it like that. Now let's look up here at the Arrange button. That allows me, when the, when the shape's highlighted, to move it to the back, or just move it backwards. So now I can see what I'm doing. All right, pretty simple. The other thing you can do is rotate things. So let's click on the B so you can see it, and you can say, I want to rotate 90 degrees. And then you, I just typed in 90, I hit the Enter button, and he's 90 degrees. Let's say I don't like that, easiest to click Undo. Okay. That kind of covers that. You can also directly position where things are gonna go. So let's say I want this um, block here to be at one inches over on the x-axis. I know we're gonna have to reach back to math, which is no fun for anyone. One over from the x, one over from the y. So I would just type in one here and one here and hit enter. And now this is centered where I want it. That is handy when you're creating a project where you wanna start putting score lines on it or things like that. It's very helpful to have these things precisely on the mat. Otherwise, normally, who cares? <laughs> Just being honest. All right, moving off to the side, let's take a look. We Now, they have redone this side right situation over here, situation, um, uh, items here. And now it just has the layers and then it's got color sync. So let's say I want this back piece. I'm gonna change the color of this back piece. And to do that, I just click on the item itself and in comes all kinds of choices. Current color, so you could do matchy matchy. So I'm probably gonna choose this one here, which I'll tell you why in a minute. Well, let's see if I'm gonna do that. Uh, then we got basic colors and then you actually have a picker and you can put in a code. So there's a lot of choices. So let's say I decide I want to do a dark brown. I just click down there for the dark brown. Then later, pretend I'm not sure about that. I can color sync and I can move these items around so now it matches that background. That's handy for when you go to cut. So let's say you're fooling around and maybe you have a light pink and you have a little bit lighter pink and they're not quite the same and you're like, oh no. Color sync is the way to drag these things so they match the exact pinks if you just started color picking um, wildly. All right, and then there's also this layer button. Now, this image has lots of layers, so you can ungroup the layers and then move them around as such. Okay, so that's something to know to do. Let's say you're upset you did all that, you just start hitting the undo button and it all goes back to the way it was. Yay! <laughs> okay, you can also group images. So let me put this on here and let's say I want to use this as a group so I can resize it or move it around. I can click and drag like I just did and then it will be grouped. Or if I pr prefer, I can click on one, I can hit while well, I'm on the Mac, the command button, and then I can hit group that way. And so now they're grouped. Now that went by kind of fast. It's really easier to just click and drag like I did here, and then it's grouped. 
Okay, I can also duplicate over here. So let's say I click that, I get a whole other copy. So that's kind of good to know. Sometimes you need those. And then I can delete. So I'm going to delete my other copy. So down here at the bottom of this menu bar is five items you'll, you typically use in Design Space 2. Slicing, welding, attaching, flattening, and contouring. And I will be reviewing those in other videos. So I hope you enjoy this. It's certainly, this is a lot easier to use. It runs a lot smoother. I will say on the Mac, I happen to be running it on Chrome. It's not guaranteed to run on Chrome. It seems to be fine, but they actually recommend you use Safari. Um, Internet Explorer also is not a winner. I would try Firefox also if you are on a PC. Okay, I hope you have an awesome day. Take care and I hope this was helpful. I'll have a playlist of additional videos and you can check those out too. All right, have a wonderful day.